Okay, how you guys doing? We are going to move on swiftly along to our quest to find the directional derivative of phi at P0 as it travels along the direction U. Okay, this is what we want to find out because like I said, in three-dimensional space, we have a certain point we can travel in all sorts of directions. So we want to find the rate of change of phi, which is the scalar field as we travel in the direction of U. On top of that, we found a general form to kind of express the value of phi at a certain point along the line, which is x0 plus lambda u1, y0 plus lambda u2, and z0 plus lambda u3. Okay, this one over here gives us the value of phi as we travel along the line. So, as I want to show you over here, where we got p0 over here, there's a line like this, okay, that will give us the value of p. And this line is determined by the unit vector u, which travels parallel, parallel along the line over there. Okay, so the problem or the quest that we want to try to find is that the rate of change of p, okay, the rate of change of phi, sorry, the rate of change of phi, because the p is, is going to be a new point as we travel along the directional vector u, or the unit vector u, okay, and I would say that we are going to differentiate this with to a certain variable, and I give you some time to think about it, okay, and I hope that you thought about it now, and that variable is differentiating this whole equation in terms or with respect to lambda, okay, and we're going to evaluate it at p naught, which is the same as lambda equals to zero. Okay, let's have a quick discussion of this first. Now, why is it lambda? Okay. I'm at p naught over here. To reach p, okay, I'm gonna take a vector, or I'm gonna take the unit vector u, okay, and I'm gonna multiply it by lambda, the scalar, the scalar factor, okay, so to speak, the scalar factor, and that will bring me from p naught to p. So, and, and the p and p naught has its associated phi value once it's put inside the function over there. So you see, okay. If lambda is small, okay, lambda is small, I will only travel a small distance along the line. The new value of p is going to be over here. But if lambda is big, I'm going to travel a larger distance. So it seems to me, okay, that the new value of phi that we're going to have by using the coordinates of p is going to depend on the factor of lambda over here. In other words, the rate of change, okay, is really dependent on how much lambda changes, likening that to two-dimensional calculus if you wish. The, the distance that I'm going to travel is going to change based on the time. So if I walk for say one hour, okay, that would mean that I take the distance that I travel and I divide it or I differentiate it with respect to the time, okay, and that is what it means here. I'm going to take the change in the value or the new value of phi and I'm going to differentiate it in terms of lambda because lambda really determines how far or how much the value of phi changes, just like how the time de determines how much the value of the displacement changes. Okay, I hope that is clear enough, okay? As, as time goes by, I try my best to really clarify what I mean. Okay, so anyways, differentiating this with respect to lambda. Lambda is over here, however, the problem is that phi is multivariable. So I hope you got your partial differentiation under the graphs of your fingertips, or if you can, you can check out the calculus textbook. Now, the chain rule version of partial differentiation is this. Now, assuming we've got z written in terms of x and y, and I want to differentiate z in terms of another variable t, what I will do is that I'll partial differentiate z, okay? Bear in mind z is a, some sort of function with respect to x, multiplying that with dx dt, where x is one of the variables that is used to define z. I will add that up with different partial differentiating z in terms of the other variable, which is y, and then time multiplying that with dy, um, dy dt. Okay, so using that as the rule, okay, if you if you haven't studied it yet, you just take my word for it, okay? And I thank you for that. Okay, so we need to differentiate this monster of an equation. Okay, first, partial differentiate phi with one of the variables, in this case is x. Then we multiply that by differentiating x in terms of lambda because lambda is the original term that we set out to differentiate in terms of, okay? Ending up with partial differentiate phi with respect to y multiplying by dy d lambda and then ending up with partial differentiating phi 
with respect to z multiplying with dz d lambda. Okay, I hope that's clear enough. Okay, now we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Now we need to focus on this, this, and this. Okay, so if x is over here, y is over here, z is over here, we have pretty good shape because there's a lambda over there. That means we can certainly differentiate this in terms or with respect to lambda. Okay, and that will give us partial differentiation phi with respect to x multiplied by u1. Right, because this is reduced to nothing, differentiating this with respect to lambda, we get u1. Plus partial differentiation phi with respect to y and times likewise u2 plus partial differentiate phi with respect to z times by u3. Okay, that is good enough. Okay, so if we want the directional derivative of phi at point P0, we will just simply diff partial differentiate phi with respect to this, this, and this. Okay, we'll get a, a, a function and then we'll put, okay, a multivariable function, just to bear that in mind, and we'll put the coordinates of P0 inside there. And we'll write it as this partial differentiate phi with respect to x evaluated at P0 times with u1. Okay? And likewise for all this, p not u two plus and p p not u three. Okay. Now knowing that all these are scalar, all these are scalar. That's why the directional derivative is a scalar value, and that's why all this is scalar over here. They're not vectors. Okay. And if we were to pay extra attentiveness to this whole thing over here we can see that this thing over here is equals to the gradient of phi evaluated at p naught dot with the unit vector u over here okay and that is how the phase of the gradient of phi del phi comes up okay and one way to look about it this is how we can relate the gradient of phi to the directional derivative okay because it's nice that when we do the calculations using normal calculus using partial differentiation okay we get an equation like that and all of a sudden we can somehow turn this equation into two vectors and dot them together bearing in mind when we dot two vectors we get a scalar value which is what we need the direction derivative of phi at point naught in the in the direction of u Okay, and that is one way we can see how the gradient of phi is used. Okay, we're going to have more discussion coming up.